Let's continue on modeling our fresh air ventilation system here by adding some detail. So the first things that I want to add are going to be a configuration for the ventilation unit itself. Then we'll add some information around the ducting. And eventually we'll turn our, our attention to the question of the flow rates for the spaces. So I'm here in my grasshopper scene, and I'm going to come into my fresh air ventilation section here. And let's take a look at some of these inputs in a little more depth, and let's start to add some additional components. So first of all, let's be a little bit more explicit. We have to enter, or we should, enter a system type. So by default, it's going to choose a balanced passive house ventilation with heat recovery, but of course that's not always what we would want. But um, let's make sure, just for just to be really explicit, so we'll say uh, one balanced vent with heat recovery. And I'll put that in as the vent system type. Oops, that's the problem. Uh, there we go. Uh, right, small typo there. Uh, so, okay, so we've got our ventilation type being input, and we should give it a name, uh, just for, again, for, for clarity. So I'm going to call this, um, we'll call this whole house, or, or you could call it, you know, you could call it whatever, whatever, whatever you want, whatever, whatever name you want to give to the ventilation system. It's not going to matter very much in this case, because we've only got the one system operational, but if you had more than one system, then the name becomes important. You know, you've got your first floor system, your seventh floor system, your you know lobby system, uh, what have you. So the name becomes important in those cases. Here we've only got the one system, so it, it doesn't matter that much. Okay, so that's that's good. Um, the next piece that we might want to add here would be to be more explicit in the, the ventilation unit that we're using. Um, if we take a look at our 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 standard output here. Um, Scroll, make this a little bigger. We are we have got our vent unit is a PHPP ventilation unit, and it's just a default HRV. And we saw when we looked in the PHPP that it's just a 75% efficient HRV. So that wouldn't really be good. That wouldn't be super good for for the types of high performance buildings that we're working on. So I want to input my own vent unit here. So how am I going to do that? Well, if we come up to our PassFouse tools and we come to 01 model and we come down to the ventilation section, notice that there is an, a component for creating a new PHPP vent unit. So the actual ventilator, the HRV or ERV unit that you're going to use, uh, we can configure that and add a bunch of components and, and information there. So let me do a little rearranging. Let me move this off to the side here. And um, so this is going to be our vent unit, and the vent unit is going to get input into the vent unit input. So what do we get by default from our, our component here? Um, well, we get our default unit. So just like over here, here we can see a little bit more about the properties of the default unit, but it's the exact same default unit, 75% heat recovery, 0% moisture recovery, electrical efficiency of 0.45 watts per cubic meter per hour, um, frost temp of uh, minus 5 degrees Celsius, and no, it is not outside. So those are the basic parameters for a vent unit, but of course we can um, change any of those. So let's call this Ed's Awesome ERV, and we'll make that the name. And so now instead of default, we have Ed's Awesome ERV. And um, let's give it some parameters. So the, what kind of heat recovery? Let's do 99% heat recovery. No, that's stupid. Let's not do that. Let's use a real HRV. Let me pull up a spec sheet for a real HRV. And let's use this guy. So let's use, let me pull up a spec sheet. So this is another passive house certificate. This one for an ERV unit. In this case, a Zender group, um, Q600 ERV. So this is a very, very common ERV that we might use in a cold climate like um, uh, you know, the Northeast uh, in, in the US, in North America. Um, and uh, you know, very high quality, uh, very, very um, high performance unit. So th again, this certificate just comes from the PHI um, uh, database. But importantly, we have all sorts of useful information here about how this uh, system or this piece of equipment works. So for instance, it has a 80% heat recovery, 0.22 watt hours per cubic meter uh, as the uh, electrical efficiency and 68% uh, humidity recovery. 
So 80%, hmm, that's not awesome. But I guess the bigger unit, the, um, you know, this is the 600. I think the smaller units like the 450s have a, have a higher efficiency, but um, it's okay. We get the 68% moisture recovery. It's 80%. It's not, not terrible. So, okay, let's put that in. Let's do that instead. So instead of it's awesome ERV, let's do Zender Comfo Air Q600 ERV. Okay. And the, more, the heat recovery was 80%. So 80%. And we said that the moisture recovery was 68%. Is that true? Is that what we said? Yeah, 68%. And the electrical efficiency was 0 0.22. And so we put that for electrical efficiency. And it's an ERV. So usually with the ERV, we, could, we should check with the document with the manufacturer. But I think usually with the ERV, we can get a frost temp of down to like minus 8 um, uh, Celsius, obviously. Um, we should check with the with the specifics of this unit, but I think that's true for, for this unit. In any event, we have configured our very own unit, our very own um, uh, uh, HRV unit. And so now to use it, all we need to do is take this vent unit and apply it to this system. So this ventilation system is now using this vent unit. And so anything I do here to configure or manipulate or set up the parameters flow through into this vent system. This vent system is applied to these honeybee, room, honeybee rooms and the, those honeybee rooms then carry that information along uh, until it gets exported to the PHPP. All right, so that's how we would set up a vent unit. It's um, Relatively straightforward. Um, there's, um, you know, not much, not much to it there. Uh, and of course, at any time, we can come back and uh, sort of adjust any of those configuration, any of those those elements that we like. Now, in in addition to the vent unit itself, um, so obviously those input parameters are super important. But in addition to the vent unit itself, the other thing which is going to be really, really critical um, for for our purposes is are is going to be the length and insulation quality and, and thickness of the ducting. Right? So when we talk about ventilation, fresh air ventilation systems in passive house, it's not enough to just look at the heat recovery and efficiency of the unit itself. You have to think about the unit plus all of its ducting as one system because uh, you're going to have a lot of heat loss associated with those ducts as well. So the longer the ducts and the, the more poorly insulated the ducts are, the more heat loss you'll have through those ducts. And so we, we obviously need to enter the duct information here. That's going to be a critical piece of this um, of this whole the whole puzzle. So notice here that we have two inputs for ducts. So we have the opportunity or the ability to enter in some information here as our in our ducts. And if we come up to our pH tools, we go to O1 model, we can come down here and notice that we have, where are we? Here we are, create new PHPP vent duct, and we can drop that onto the canvas. And we have some information or the ability to dial in some bits about our duct here. Let's take a look at what the standard duct is. So the default duct out of the box. Uh, what do we have here? So we have a duct length of five meters, a duct width of 104 millimeters, so four inches, and a duct uh, insulation of um, two, uh, 52 millimeters, so two inches, and a lambda of 0.04. So that's like, I don't know, kind of fiberglass ducting insulation, I believe. Uh, okay, so fine. So that's the default duct. So that's the default duct, which is already being used by the vent system. Um, we're going to take this HRV duct output and connect it to one or the other of our inputs here um, once we um, make some adjustments. So first of all, let's say that five meters is too long. Let's say that I want to keep it restricted to two meters in length. Let's say, let's say you know, it's a passive house building. We're going to be thoughtful about the location of our of our duct and um, it's going to, you know, we're going to try and keep it as short as possible. Let's say also that for the Q600, I think we want to use something more like 160 millimeters uh, for the duct width itself. We could, we could take a look. I'm not sure if we have that in this spec document. Let's see if we have the, it would sort of depend on the flow rate a bit as well. Yeah, I don't think we have that information here, but um, I think for, for a, a unit of that size and at the flow rate we're going to run it at, I think 160 millimeters um, uh, would be more appropriate uh, uh, in this case. Um, note, I should note also with all of these, 
if you if you want, you can always input um, you know everything in inches. So for instance, you know you could say, well, it's a six inch duct, so 152. And notice it'll tell you, okay, I'm converting that input. So you can do the same thing up here. You could say, you know, uh, six foot in length. And it'll convert that to you know 1.8 meters, and then uh, of course those will those will flow into our um, our input lengths and uh, etc. So uh, you can input that information however you like. Um, for the insulation thickness, let's say that it is a passive house. Let's do something like this. Let's say four inches. Whoops. Let's say four inches. We could also say inches this way. Let's say four inches of insulation thickness. And that four inches gets converted to 101 millimeters, and that's going to come in as our insulation thickness. So that's our insulation thickness. And um, and then lastly, we could put in an insulation conductivity if we knew it. Um, we we could go off and find a you know find a, a product spec and find some you know an insulation uh, spec someplace and use that. Um, we could also just leave it at 0.04. That's a reasonably conservative estimate. Uh, that's watts per meter kelvin. Um, the reasonably conservative estimate for a sort of duct insulation. So OK, so we've now built a new duct. It's shorter, it's bigger, and it's better insulated. So that's going to change our calculation a fair bit. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this duct, and I'm going to input it here in uh, HRV duct 2. That's going to get folded in as part of our overall system here. So I can input these ventilator units, I can input these ventilation ducts, I can input some information about the ducts, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one way. We can absolutely do it that way. That works totally fine. As with all things, though, or as with many things that I've shown you throughout this, these video series, um, my preference is actually to encode or embed some of this information back in the Rhino side. So we can actually build our ducts in Rhino and then reference them in. So for instance, if I come into my Rhino scene, and I've got my little ERV here, so I'm in my Rhino scene, I've got my um, floor plan views, and you can see we've got this mechanical room with a hot water tank and a washer dryer, and I've got my ERV. Let's go ahead and draw in the ERV and the duct. So I'm going to come over here to my layers, and first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new layer called 04 Systems, and I'll make a new sublayer and call this the... Um, Let's just call it the ERV, and let's set that as um, the active layer. You can do this all on one layer. I like to keep things broken up for managing the bits and pieces, but you know, however you prefer to do it. And um, we don't have to do this, but just for sort of visual clarity, I'm going to go ahead and just I'm just going to make a little box here for us to represent the ERV. So let let's say this is our ERV, right? And maybe it's it's wall hung or it's up on a little stand off the off the ground. So that's our ERV. Right? It's got the heat recovery core in it. It's going to have ducts coming in, ducts coming out. Um, that would be a you know reasonable-ish shape. Sure, we could go off to the spec and we could find the exact size and model it. That would be fine if we're trying to configure equipment. Um, to totally, for, for our purposes, this will be good enough. Remember, that the, um, what I'm trying to do here is actually model a duct. So what I'm going to do is actually just using my line tool. So I'm going to come in here to the line tool. I'm going to click on line. I'm going to say vertical, whoops, not that, start the line, regular line, say vertical, V, and then I'm going to come up off the ERV some amount. I'm going to come up to like here. Sure, we could be more careful with this. We could we could dial this in and we could figure out exactly how far up the duct's going to go. And then the duct is going to sort of change direction and it's going to go out to the edge of the envelope. Right, so this might be a duct that comes up, and maybe it's maybe it's not off the corner, maybe it's like off the middle here. And um, let me join these together. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna select them both and say join. Then I'm gonna do sub object selection on this guy, and then pull him to the middle. So maybe it's more like that. It kind of comes up off the middle of the HRV and then comes across. You know, we could um, we could go find the cut sh the cut sheet or the shop drawings for the HRV and figure out exactly where the port is on the top and sort of make this as accurate as we wanted it to be. Um, you know, but for our purposes, I think this will be this will be pretty close. So we have this curve now. And so I can take this curve and I can re actually reference it into my grasshopper scene. So let me do this. Let me let me copy. Whoops. Or let me just do this. I'll just come up to a model and I'll say make a new duct. 
And let's look at what happens when I input that curve here as a reference. So first of all, duct length is 5 meters. But if I reference this curve in, see this, see set one curve, and I input that curve, notice that the input is now coming in at 1.4 meters. This is actually going out and measuring this curve. If I was to make this curve a lot longer, notice that the, the length goes up to 3.17. Let me undo that. So the length is at 1.4 meters. So this is actually going off and measuring that 3D geometry. Notice uh, that we are getting a warning here, though. So what is this warning telling us? It's saying no parameter values found in Rhino using grasshopper values or defaults. So notice also that the width gets set to 0, the thickness is set to 0, and the lambda is set to 0. So one of the things that happens is if we reference in geometry, now I need to go through and input the parameters for things like the width. So now you can see I can set the width there. Or... So that's one way we could do it. The other thing we could do is back in Rhino, if I come up here to my Passivals Tools toolbar, notice that we have a duct parameters input. And if I select my curve geometry and click this duct parameters input, notice I have the ability to input some in information here about the duct. So I could say that it's six inches. I could say the insulation is four inches. Notice it'll do all the conversions for me. And then let's leave our lambda conductivity at 0.04. We could go find a spec sheet, but uh, let's just leave it at the default for now. And if I say OK, just like everything else that we've done in, in our Rhino side, if I look at the curve and I look at its attribute user text, notice that information is now associated with that geometry. That's going to stay with the geometry. And our uh, grasshopper side objects are able to go out and get that information. So these things are actually able to go get that information. So I don't actually have to set any parameters here in our grasshopper scene. In fact, I don't need to use this vent duct at all. I can actually take this curve and simply input it over here directly into one of those HRV inputs. So I actually don't need any of this at all, unless I want to configure this um, explicitly using this component. So this component exists, you can use it, or you can set up all your information back in the Rhino scene and simply reference it in into the, um, into the, um, the definition here. Lots of different ways that you can do it, lots of different ways that you can input these things. I guess at some point we should make an ERV one as well so that you can actually set all your ERV parameters here as well. So maybe by the time you're watching this, we'll have one of those built um, to uh, replace this guy here. Um, right now you have to use this one, um, but we should, we should build one. That would sort of complete the set here. Uh, anyway, uh, here is our completed fresh air ventilation system. We could, the last piece, um, just to finish this off, the last piece that we might want to add would be this guy, a exhaust ventilation unit. Um, if that was the case, if we wanted to add a kitchen ventilation unit, we would input that here. Um, we'll leave that off for now. Uh, you can go ahead and add that if you feel like it uh, in, uh, uh, yourself. So we have our ventilation system configured now. And the last step, let's go ahead and take a look at what it looks like in our PHPP. All right, so everything has exported. So let's take a look now. Let's go take a look at our, exp our PHPP. So we're back in the, let me make this a little bigger. We are back in the additional ventilation worksheet. And let's scroll down a little bit. We haven't touched anything to do with the rooms. So none of this has changed. Schedule is still the same. The flow rates are all still the same. Uh, but if we scroll down and we look at the ventilation unit, notice that it now has our name, whole house, right? We gave it that name in our tool. We are also, um, using a Zender ComfoAir Q600 uh, ERV, so that's coming through. Our electrical efficiency set to 0.68. Hmm. Is that true? Did I input 0.68? Hmm. Might be doing some conversion there. I might have to fix that. A little bit of a, must be a, must be a typo there. All right, I'll fix that. By the time you're using this, that'll, that'll be working. So I'll fix that. Um, so the electrical efficiency and um, 
Uh, over here, though, we get our 80% heat recovery and our 68% uh, energy recovery. And there's our minus eight for our outdoor temperature. So all that information from the vent unit is flowing through properly. So that part is great. And then lastly, down at the bottom here, notice here are our ducts. So both of our ducts here, 152, six inch ducts, four inches of insulation. And notice that their lengths are now being determined by our input. So rather than that five meter uh, default length, we're now dialing in the actual um, uh, dimension for those. And of course, with the one that we referenced from Rhino, that's a live dimension. So if we change the shape or size or length of that line in Rhino, then that information is going to flow right in. It's going to automatically calculate. So this is all working now. The very last piece, so all that is dialed in, the very last piece that we want to look at here with our fresh air ventilation, we'll come back in the next section and do that, has to do with the fresh air flow rates and this schedule information over here. So let's come back and we'll take a look at how this is getting set, and that will round out our discussion of fresh air ventilation systems.